Welcome. I'm glad you're able to join us today. Today we're going to look into a topic that addresses some basic needs of every person. Let's get right into the scripture. Jeremiah 1, 4 through 10. Then the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctify thee, and I ordain thee a prophet unto the nations. Then said I, Ah, Lord God, behold, I cannot speak, for I am a child. But the Lord said unto me, Say not, I am a child, for thou shalt go to all that I shall send thee, and whatsoever I command thee thou shalt speak. Be not afraid of their faces, for I am with thee to deliver thee, saith the Lord. Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth, and the Lord said unto me, Behold, I have put my words in thy mouth. See, I have this day set thee over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out and to pull down and to destroy and to throw down, to build and to plant. Let's look at one more other scripture before we get into our topic. Matthew 13, 45 through 46 states, Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a merchant man seeking goodly pearls, who when he had found one pearl of great price, went and sold all that he had and bought it. What I want to talk to you today about is significance. Let's pray. Lord, we just ask for your hand to be with us, your anointed upon our hearts and our minds. And Lord, that you draw us closer with an understanding of how to obtain a greater sense of significance. Let your anointing to be here, and I pray that you touch every soul that is listening in Jesus' name. Amen. So these two scriptures that we've just read in Jeremiah and now in Matthew, let's work from Matthew and then talk about Jeremiah. Matthew is talking about how a merchant man was looking for something in life, something valuable, pearls. And when he found the one pearl of great price, went and sold all that he had and bought it. Now, this scripture can be taken in different ways, but the way we're going to look at it today is this. That the Bible says the kingdom of heaven is like this. There was a merchant man. What? A man that went to buy. And notice this. He looked everywhere and he found this pearl of great price. And he sold all that he had and he bought it. As we look at the scripture, I want you to picture yourself as the pearl of great price. And the merchant man is Jesus Christ himself. In a sense, he left his position in heaven and came down to the earth and through his own blood, the selling of all that he had, through his own death, he purchased one pearl of great price. And that's you. In Jeremiah, when Jeremiah was a young man, God approached him to become something great and got, and Jeremiah said, how can I? I'm only a child. I'm not, I, I can't be successful. And God encouraged and said, oh yes, I'm with you. And I have chosen you, I have picked you, and I got a plan for you. That shows that Jeremiah's life was significant, significant to God. Let's get in this a little bit more. At life's beginning, our Creator gifts individuals with significance. Let's look at the syn synonyms. Importance, value, substance, worth, weight, meaning. All of these different synonyms go along with something that's significant. And God sees value and worth and importance and meaning and substance to you. He wants you to understand that to him you are very valuable. Nobody can fit into the body of Christ just like you. You may not have the same talents as others. You may not have the same abilities as others. But God has a perfect spot for you and it is significant.
A definition of significance, it means meaning, import, that which is intended to be expressed as the significance of a nod or of a motion of the hand or of a word or expression. It means it has meaning. It's significant. Force, energy, power of impressing the mind as a duty enjoined with particular significance. A person that has significance has energy and force and power in the kingdom of God. Importance, moment, weight, consequence. Something that is significant has weight or it's a weighty situation or a weighty person in the situation. It has importance. The word worth come from Greek and Latin, its primary sense is strength. Number one, value, that quality of a thing which renders it useful or which will produce an equivalent good in some other thing. Value of mental qualities, excellence, virtue, and usefulness. That means worth, it means value. And number three, again, importance, valuable qualities applied to things. Deserving of, something that is deserving of. The significance principle, which is where we got this from a book called The Significance Principle. The basic driving force of human behavior is the desire for acceptance understanding, appreciation, and recognition. The needs for significance is such a powerful aspect of our personality that it motivates us to identify with success and just as powerfully motivates us to avoid failure and conflict. The drive for significance. I know I'm going through these slides quickly, but we'll slow down in a little bit. Each person lives with an inborn desire to be significant. In fact, every aspect of human behavior, both positive or negative, can be directly traced to the pursuit of personal significance. What that means is our drive is that we want to feel like our value, our, our life is valuable, that it's worth something. And we're going to talk about those aspects in this lesson. Depression, anger, and impatience are just some of the ways that people illustrate their yearning for significance. Likewise, loyalty, reliability, and responsibility are driven by the hope that significance can be sustained. Persons who behave contrary to the needs of the family, organization, friends, and the community may have a problem that can be understood in the light of his need to find a pace or place of significance. His problems cannot be adequately resolved until the matter of significance is fully addressed. What that's saying is that some people, the reason why they're having conflict is because they don't feel significant and they're struggling to find their place. We'll read more about that in just a moment. Some people search for significance in an odd way. They demean someone they consider safe. What does that mean? A person who can't easily fight back in order to give themselves a temporary, what they would call a significance fix. What that means is they bully other people. They put other people down. They talk about other people. You know, some people to try to find significance in themselves feel like if I can tear somebody else down, that elevates me at least above that person, which is really just all in their mind. But notice something interesting. While the critic may often appear to be assertive and confident, in reality, he is expressing a high level of fear that others will deem him insignificant. When someone attempts to find significance by discounting others, he does not attain significance at all, but a shallow smugness that soon fades. 
To keep alive the illusion of importance, the person must continue to undercut others. That is all not because they or the gentleman really feels like the other people are so low, but it is because he himself feels low and must push others down to try to lift himself up. Here again, it's all in his head. It doesn't change the reality of people's uh, competencies, their contribution, all that. Four things for the drive for significance. There is the desire to be recognized. There is the desire to be appreciated. There's a desire to be important. And of course, the desire to be significant. All four of these things are in that drive or that desire or that learning or yearning and longing. I mean, self-esteem puffs up the ego. Self-worth develops value. Now, that is kind of an opinion statement. I've always preferred the words self-worth or self-value over self-esteem. Because in my mind, the word esteem, I know it's not spelled this way, but it's just um, like vapor, self-esteem. I know that's not what it means, but self-worth gives a very good description of value. 1 Corinthians 4, 6. And these things, brethren, I have in a figure transferred to myself and to Apollos for your sakes, that ye might learn in us not to think of men above that which is written, that no man, uh, no one of you be puffed up for one against another. And 1 Corinthians 8, 1. Now, as touching things offered into idols, we know that we all have knowledge. But here, knowledge puffeth up but charity edifieth. Putting these two scriptures together and looking at them is this, is that Paul was warning, don't look at men higher than they should be, and that one of you should not puff up for one against another. What does it mean puff up one against another? That is like feelings of pride. That is feelings of insignificance that is forced out to make us feel like we're better, maybe by putting others down, or tooting our own horn, as they say, making our own brags and constantly talking about us to make ourselves feel better about ourselves. And then he says, knowledge puffeth up, but charity edifieth. This is very key for what we're going to run into for the rest of the lesson. Knowledge puffeth up. Well, it makes you feel proudful. It makes you feel like you're something great. But Paul is emphasizing that charity edifieth. What's that mean? Love builds. Love who? Love others. And we're going to get into that in just a little bit. From your beginning, you instinctively feel a need to be held in high regard. You would search for someone to tell you, I think you're important. You have value. Your needs are legitimate. You are needed. We're looking for that because it gives value to that our life has purpose. Our life has meaning. We're here for a reason. And in the kingdom of God, that is purely known. We can see that now in Romans chapter number 12, verses 1 and 2. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Here he is telling, get yourself fully into God. Why? Because coming fully into God, giving yourself totally to God, is the only way to be totally released from all of the baggage and the garbage and the ideas and the pressures and the conformities. That's why he said, be not conformed to this world. That the world tries to put on you, which creates you or makes you, forces you to become something other than the true you. But he'd be transformed in the renewing of your mind. What's that? To become the full you that can only be demonstrated when you are sold out to God. When you give yourself fully to God, God helps you to be liberated, to become the true and entire you. Because it goes on verse number two. Um, 
it ends uh, verse number one, which is your reasonable service. Uh, let me start over. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your body a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may be able to prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. All of those things, good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. The will of God is the full you to come out. Of course, the only way that to happen is to be fully in God. There are only two sources for significance. God and others. The only way a person is going to feel significant is through God and through others. I want you to see this. This is great. The person in your presence at this moment has a need to feel valued and respected, thus to be touched at that inner place of worth. You see, for you to become significant, you have to add value to others. That's what makes a person significant. So many people, they wander around and vacillate in a world, stumbling about in the darkness, trying to find something to make their life worth living. What's interesting about that is they become so self-absorbed, so focused on trying to help themselves that they miss out that the places of significance are from God, which is inherent when he created us in the womb. He said, I already got a plan for you. You got a purpose. I need you in my kingdom. And two is others. And we're going to talk about the others in a little bit. Romans chapter 5 and 8 says, But God commended his love towards us, that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Inherent in every life is a God-given value and worth. He loved us so much. He saw you as a pearl of great price that he came and sacrificed all that he had because he loved you. That means you must have some value. If God Almighty, the creator of the entire universe, sees such great value in you, you must have worth. You must have value. Significance is given or built in a human being by others. It cannot be obtained by self. I already mentioned that, but I want you to see that, first of all, God says we're significant. God gives us value. But then the next thing, the way to get significance is to make yourself valuable to others. Yes, there is value within yourself, but by giving to others, they will give you a sense of significance. Let's talk about a baby for a second. A new baby that comes in, the mother loves the baby. What does the baby do? Does it get a job? Does it earn income? Does it even help clean the house? A baby does absolutely nothing, but the mom sees its significance and loves it. But eventually, the baby, or let me move on. The mom will invest in the baby, invest in the baby, invest in the baby. And as the baby matures, it starts to feel significant. And then it gives back to the mom. How? By loving cuddling, saying nice things, and eventually doing little jobs, cleaning their room, all that stuff. And the significance then goes both ways. Next point, significance cannot be obtained collectively within a group. That is very, very key. It is individual. Relationships are what bring about significance. We live our lives in the realm and the quality of the relationships we have. As it says collectively with a group, it, it cannot be attained collectively with a group. Just because a person belongs to a group does not necessarily give them significance, even though we may try to obtain self-significance by the groups that we may attach ourselves to. I'm not saying to be, not to attach ourselves to groups because when groups interact, they can accomplish good things. We're not trying to attack groups because groups are good. But notice this, just because a person belongs to a group 
does not mean they have significance. Let's think about this for a second. Let's say you are a Seattle Seahawks football fan. Maybe you go to the games. Maybe you put on a jersey. And people feel a sense of belonging when doing that. But to the team, they don't know who you are. To the team, all you are is somebody that's buying the tickets and buying the jerseys. You don't really have a direct connect of significance. That's the reason why a group cannot give you significance. Only relationships can. The next point, it has to be given by a person to whom the receiver respects. If a person wants significance, it can only be given to them for somebody else. Well, how, so I'm going to run around and look for people to give me significance. Not necessarily. I'll, we'll get into this. The significance paradox is this. When we make other people important by showing them respect and understanding, they will be more likely to reciprocate. What am I saying here is this. The way to be to receive significance is to be significant to somebody else. That's why Paul said love or charity edifieth. Love builds up, but it doesn't just build up the other person, which I strongly believe in building up other people, uh, talking to them about their value, encouraging them, saying good things, um, telling them that you're proud of them. All that is real. All that is significant. All that is right. But then it reciprocates somewhere along the line. Those people say back to you. You made an impact in my life. I am changed because of you. Now you have become significant. And that significance becomes internalized in yourself. So first you tried to be significant to somebody else. Invest in them. And then by investing in them, it will reciprocate. It will come back to you. Let's look at the scriptures. The way to find your own significance is to actively recognize the significance of others. Philippians 2 and 4. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. What does that mean? Don't just be all wrapped up in your own needs. Look at the needs of others. Philippians 4.17, not because I desire a gift, but I desire a fruit that may abound to your account. Paul said, I am investing in you, not really necessarily for me, but the, there be fruit that will abound in your account or for you. And guess what? When he invested in others, it precipitated back to him and he felt value. 1 Corinthians 12, 14. Behold, the third time I am ready to come to you, and I will not be burdensome to you, for I seek not yours, but you. For the children are not to lay up for the parents, but the parents for the children. What he was saying, I am not in this for what I can get from you or get out of you or what kind of uh, value I can obtain. I'm in this for you. I invest in you. See what I'm saying is in making others feel significant, which fed back that he felt significant. Luke chapter six and verse 38, give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over. Shall men give into your bosom? For with the same measure that you meet with all, it should be measured to you again. And that is so applicable to significance. When you love others, when you invest in others, when you encourage others, when you praise others, when you tell others how well they've done and that you're proud of them, 
all these things, these positive attributes, you express a, another person's value. It says here, and it sh give and it shall be given unto you. It comes back around. I could talk many times, tell many stories about how I invest in people, invested in people, invested in people. And yeah, some of them just go on. I've had people even stab me in the back, they say. I've had people say bad things about me. And usually it was because uh, I wasn't willing to compromise my convictions. But it wasn't because I was cruel to them. It was because I, I loved them. I helped people. And when you love people, even if they don't agree with you, even if they don't follow the advice you give them, even if they turn their back on God, They'll say, I may not agree with Pastor Warnicking, but I know this. He cared about me. He was real. And I pray that's, that's the way I'm perceived. I try hard to be that way, and I try hard to live that way. I want my character to be that way. For with the same measure that you meet or that you give out, it shall be measured to you again. It's coming back. Beware seeking significance where it cannot be found. Here's just a few places where people look for it, but it's not there. Oops, there you go. Being bossy. When a person displays their importance all the time, they're not going to feel significant. People that are bossy or, or bullies, those kind of things, when they may feel this surge of importance, but at the end of the day, they don't feel significant because they know people don't respect them. They know people don't uh, enjoy them. Holding on to racial or gender prejudices. Uh, some people feel like they're better than others because of their race or gender, which is absolutely ludicrous, especially in the scripture. When the Bible tells us that there's neither male nor female, there's neither bond nor free, that all those kind of things, God sees us all on an equal playing field. The only way to make advantage is the more you submit yourself to God and the more you allow God to transform you into the likeness of his dear son. Refusing to talk, especially when someone wants to hear from you. Huh, isn't that an interesting one? Refusing to talk. That doesn't make you more significant. Just communicate with people. Spreading gossip definitely does not make you better than other people. Matter of fact, God's, the Bible says that God hates a tale bearer. Interrupting another speech to inject your better idea. That's disrespectful. And when we disrespect another person, that belittles them and makes them feel like they don't have value, or at least you don't value them. How can you invest significance into another? Or if you don't invest significance in another, how can they bring significance back to you? Invest in others. Being critical does not make us more significant. Just because we can point out somebody else's faults or errors or uh, things you disagree with, do it tact tactfully if it needs to be discussed. If it doesn't need to be discussed, just let it go. A person that is a workaholic does not make them more significant. It means that they're seeking value. Perfectionism does not make a person more significant. And I'm not saying that there's not uh, there's not a reward in uh, a job well done, because there is. We need to do a good job. But perfectionism can become a, a place where it is our own poor self-image that we can't handle things being not ideal. They have to be perfect. And if they're not perfect, then we feel low about ourselves. That is not a place to find significance. 
airing your anger in a cutting tone of voice procrastinating because you've gotten better things to you've got better things to do let me throw in here too is that some people that they, they uh, are always late they're late they're late they're late they're late to this they're late to that and uh, sometimes they they have they have this false thought in their head that my time and all that I'm doing is so important that it it drives me to be late to everything um, what you're saying there is that I am trying to feel more significant than the other person because I just stole their time by being late I interrupted their schedule and really what is it's just simply a proclamation that I am desperate to feel significant so I'm stealing time from others to make me feel more important when it's not true being seductive or manic ma manipulative stubbornly insisting on how right you are uh, and sarcasm those kind of things do not bring significance into your heart it may get your head but really down inside you find it yourself feeling insignificant here's a better way to be be calm and have a confident demeanor recognizing when others are stressed and responding helpfully being patient paying sincere compliments openly sharing gladness over someone else's success the Bible says rejoice with those that rejoice you should be glad for others succeeding for others doing well when you do that they feel more significant and they appreciate you remembering simple preferences of others yeah if you can just remember what something else that somebody else likes and remember that maybe uh, you remember uh, what food they like or what colors they like or something like that and when you express that or provide something for them in those realms they're like oh you remembered how did you know that of me and it makes them feel significant significant and reciprocating it makes you feel better because they think wow you're great you remembered expressing tenderness naturally saying the words I love you or I appreciate you admitting when you're wrong without excessive shame what's that mean it's a uh, it's a mature person that can admit when they're wrong or if they're not sure and it says without excessive shame meaning okay I was wrong I was horrible I did bad that's not what it's talking about it's like oh pff, I was wrong I had a friend that uh, he was a uh, architect and uh, he told me the story that he had made these huge beams uh, they were support beams for this building and the construction workers when they were putting it together they couldn't get it to work couldn't get it to work they finally contacted him and said can you come down here because we can't get it to work we can't get these beams to fit the way your drawing says and he got down there and he looked at it and granted these beams were very expensive thousands of dollars for these beams and he's looking at it he's looking at it he does measures calculations and he simply said uh, I messed up those beams are not going to work I didn't measure them to the right size or I didn't spec them out to the, the right size and he just simply admitted it and then they went back to the proverbial drawing board and he had to recreate and respec out some beams beams for it he didn't go around saying oh I'm horrible I cost the co company a bunch of money which he did but people make mistakes just admit when you're wrong being a genuine encourager a positive presence presence knowing when to speak and when to be silent committing to the ethical treatment of others 
Romans chapter 15, verses 1 through 2. We then that are strong ought to bear the infirmities of the weak and not to please ourselves. Investing in other people is not always about just pleasing ourselves. Look at verse 2. Let every one of us please his neighbor for his good to edification. Investing in other people builds them up. You know, some people that think the way to the top is to tear down others. Really, the way to the top is to build up others. Invest in someone. Ten ways to build self-worth. Now, I'm talking here about yourself now. We've talked about investing in others, investing in others. Now, look at this. Be the first to smile when you meet someone. Focus on what is good in others. Have a positive preoccupation with, uh, with what others want to accomplish. To do that, you'll have to be able to listen to others. Building significance in others, one of the key things is listening to them, called active listening. Listening to them, participate in what they have to say. And not try to always turn the conversation to your thoughts and what you want and everything. When you build up others, it builds up self-worth in yourself. Learn to regularly recognize others. See each person as unique, not as someone to be compared against. When someone mentions a personal success, celebrate with them. Encourage those who disagree with your ideas and demonstrate your sincerity by acting on their good ideas. What does that mean? Is that uh, just so I can fit in with people, I'm going to throw my, sides, my ideas away and just uh, become a chameleon and a uh, floor mat? That's not what it's talking about. What it means is this. There, if it's not that big a deal, give a little. If it is a big deal and you disagree, go ahead and say, I see some good points in what you've said. I am, I'm glad you were able, but I think I'm still going to go this way. Nothing against you, but I think this is the idea that I still want to do. But at least you've listened and communicated and been open to other thoughts. Number eight, choose to express a good attitude regardless of those around you. If everybody, you know, is uh, losing their head, going crazy, keep your head. In the in the poem, If by Rudyard Kipling, if you can keep your head when all about you are losing theirs and blaming it on you. If you can trust yourself when all men doubt you, but make allowance for their doubting too. What it says there is this, if you can keep your head and keep a good attitude when others are not having a good attitude, you're building your self-worth. If you don't understand something, admit it and take advantage of the opportunity to learn. Uh, that's one thing I've tried to do is I didn't understand you. I didn't follow what you said. I, uh, I'm not sure I, I've got it the way you explained it. And it could be that uh, you may be misunderstood or what they said had some errors in it. Whatever it could be, take the at the opportunity to learn from the experience don't put off that oh yeah i know all this i know all this when they know you don't know all this number 10 be willing to change your opinion just as you would like others to do the same uh there are some people that can quote never be wrong end quote no matter what you show them, they can't apologize. They can't admit they're wrong. 
And you know what? The reason why they do that is because they have low self-worth. They don't feel significant. If you're, if a person is confident within themselves, they can laugh off like, oh, you're right. I didn't even see that. I misunderstood. Whatever. Be willing to change your opinion if um, the situation warrants it. If, it's a, if the new opinion is better, take it. Second Corinthians chapter number 10 and verse 8. For though I should boast somewhat more of our authority, which the Lord hath given us for edification, and not for your destruction, I should not be ashamed. What I'm taking from this portion of scripture is this. Is Paul, as an apostle, in a position, he was saying, I could use my position as authority to get my way. But that's not why I have authority. The reason why I have, I have what I have is to help edify or build up others. If you feel confident and significant, you will invest in others and give them significance. It's the natural reaction. Now, if we don't feel significant and we feel low worth, low self-worth, we will strive for our own boasting or our own edification, our own, as mentioned earlier in the scripture, puffing up. But the way to become significant is invest in others. And then you are valuable to others. Acts 20 and 32. It says, And now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among all them which are sanctified. What are you saying? It's able to build you up. The word of his grace. Now, what I want you to see about this is, is speaking the words gracefully or using grace in your words or let's say add anointing and significance in your word to build up other people. Invest in people. And as we come to our last scripture, and I hope you've enjoyed this lesson, 2 Corinthians 12, 19. Again, think ye that we excuse ourselves unto you? We speak before God in Christ, but we do all things dearly beloved for your edifying. If the Apostle Paul, who had the marvelous experience of being called by a light out of heaven on the road to Damascus to repent and to turn towards God. And God says, I am going to make you the apostle of the Gentiles and, and many other accolades and praises upon him. If he saw his position was not for himself, but for the edifying of others, how much more should we do the same? If we will build up others, make others feel significant, we then become significant. Our self-worth becomes established in our heart. Let's pray. Lord, right now I'd like us to focus in and realize that without you, without your help and your direction, that we cannot become significant. But also, Lord, our self-worth is not just drawn by an internal feeling of ourself, but what we have invested in others. Help us to do the ministry of reconciliation. Help us to provoke one another to good works. Help us, Lord, to show forth your works before men that they may glorify our Father which is in heaven. Help us to invest in others so that we can find the value that we've been seeking for ourselves, that we will feel significant. I pray, Lord, that you help this understanding to go up through everyone that was listening, everybody that watched this uh, lesson tonight. I just ask for your anointing and help in Jesus' name. God bless you. You are significant in the eyes of God, and you're significant to me. I'm so glad you're in our church. God bless you. You're dismissed.